All right, let's uh, start it officially. So Diane, you're in charge of chat and uh, letting people in, out, and checking the microphones if anyone is uh, chewing next to <laughs> microphone or whatever. Oh, okay, to so welcome to this. Back. Martin, I'm going to answer. Uh, Vivian asked in the chat a, a second ago if we were going to share the uh, the recording. The recording is always shared at the same spot, but I shared the presentation. I don't know if that was the, the question, but... Um, okay, so Diane yes, is sharing yes, all share. the different links that we're going to use, but yes, the recorded presentation, we always share a recorded presentation. Actually, the one from last week is already available it's just that we didn't post uh we didn't have a post that said okay it's it's available but we will have one tomorrow we don't like to mix like different types of news so uh yes so what the the meeting from last week is already available so let's get this show started we don't we won't be here for an hour i'm pretty sure um it should go pretty quickly so this is the presentation of our special christmas activities uh <laughs> Yay! Worked uh, super hard on this. We're so happy uh, to be able to uh, at least uh, like be of some support by doing this. If if that's the one way we can help you out, we're so happy to do it. Uh, we we're thinking about teachers all the time. If you knew, oh my God. Okay, so uh, our intentions for today, as uh, if you don't know, we meet every week except next week, right? <laughs> we are taking a Christmas break as well, a well-deserved break. Uh, so our intentions, of course, we want to provide support for teachers in the distance teaching context, and we know we will be successful if you know where to find uh, and use our resources. And today's intention is directly that. We're going to show you where you can find our holiday resources and how to use them in a synchronous and asynchronous uh, setting, depending on what your school is asking from you, depending on your students, depending on what you want to do with our resources as well. My name is Martin Tremblay, and I'm joined today with uh, Diane. Hi, say? everybody. So, of course, we are pedagogical consultants with the Service National du Récit Domaine des Langues. Nadia and Sandra are uh, doing the same presentation, but for the elementary resources that we have prepared. Um, we hope that everyone is doing great, that you're taking care of yourselves. Um, and that's it. If you made it this far, uh, we're almost at the Christmas break. Woo um, so here we go. So uh, I'm presenting this way. So this way I can still see uh, my screen um, and everything. As you can see, I love to keep all of my active windows open. These are all the things I need to do. Um, so uh, the, the easiest thing we'll start with is where to find the activities. They're actually all on demandelang.qc.ca in the news section and they'll eventually be in their resources section. Okay, and it looks something like this. So you go on to demandelang.qc.ca and like we said, you click in the news section, soon to be the uh, resource section. So this is where you find it. And as you can see, and the first thing you should take note of is that you have, well, of course, the elementary stuff that's there, but we also have elementary cycle three and then secondary. Um, and just in case you are teaching maybe some very weak groups of secondary one or two or special uh, special groups, you could use the cycle three uh, activities because the cycle three activities are a lighter version of what we prepared for uh, for the secondary. Uh, so meaning that there are less texts, the questions are easier, the answers are easier to understand as well. So that's one thing you can note is that you could use cycle three for your secondary students. But let's check out what we have for you for the uh, secondary. So the most important page is right here. Um, so like I said, we won't take the, the entire uh, hour because everything is right here. We do have the, our presentation as a PowerPoint or uh, in a Google format. So this is where you can find those. 
you have the proposed learning sequence that's the most important for a lot of teachers because it contains like what you should do, how you should do it, answer keys and so on. We had people asking us, oh, what's the solution? I can find it and so on. So this is where you can find all of this uh, information. Then we divided uh, as cycle one and cycle, cycle two. So sec one and two, uh, sec three, four, five. But like I just mentioned, uh, we strongly recommend that you go and check out both of them and decide which one uh, best fits uh, is the best fit for your students, basically. And right. I think both of them have Ryan Reynolds at the end, right, Diane? They do, they do. But the the, um, the elementary version, I don't I think we we skipped the uh, Ryan Reynolds. But um, because in for secondary one and two, there are some really really strong intensive groups that might be able to do secondary one and two. And it's um, same thing for uh, you know say a really really strong secondary two enriched group. Maybe they would like the secondary three, four, five. So I mean. The, the activity is meant to, to spark um, interest and, and uh, you know, spark conversations and get your students talking and having a, a, a fun activity before Christmas. So, you know, if you, if you know your students better than anyone else does. So if you just look at the, the, the three that we proposed, you'll know which one um, that exactly. you, your students would like the most. OK, so that's the most important an important thing to take away from today is that those are just suggestions okay so please do check out the different activities once you know how it goes it's going to be super easy for you to uh to uh to, to, to go and surf through them once you know the answers and everything you don't need to watch the, the videos all over again so maybe you want to start with the three four five and go down and you'll see the the, the differences okay uh also a little word about uh, being adaptable and so on these uh, genially uh if you're familiar with genially so genially is a presentation tool that's also interactive uh, so you can make interactive presentations for your students. Uh, we, we talked about this, uh, I think it was last week, where you can have your students like click on models and things like that. So it's very, very interactive in terms of a presentation tool. But what, you're, what you can do also is that once you open that Genially presentation, it's going to ask you at the bottom if you want to reuse this presentation. So what it means is that we actually open the presentation so that you could take our presentation and change anything within it. So you don't like our title, you change the title. You don't like this question, you change the question. You want to add vocabulary, you add vocabulary. So it is adaptable. And of course, we're presenting this, uh, what is it, December 14th today? But you know what? You could use it again next year and do it in a different way. It's, it's there to stay there, okay? So everything is... Uh, uh, free of royalties, so all of the pictures and so on, the videos are are on YouTube, so unless they disappear tomorrow, they should be there uh, for a while, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the proposed learning sequence. Later on, we're going to give you time to go and explore the game itself, but for, for the time being, we're going to take a look at the proposed learning sequence because depending on your situation some of you only have like one period to teach others you have like three periods to teach and we've got plenty of stuff to do okay so there is the game but there's also the different things that you can do with the game so when you go on the propose the sequence you see that of course the the theme is holiday traditions around the world and i was just saying before we started that this is what uh, i would consider a uh, cotton candy pedagogy okay so that means it's it's sweet it's to entertain learn some stuff but you know it's not like super intensive learning with intentions here and there you know like we're taking it easy for the last week but we still have an intention okay so have fun while learning about extraordinary traditions uh and by extraordinary we mean that they're really not ordinary traditions um so you have the whoops you have the present the preparation before the online lesson uh, like we said, there are two versions of the game you, that you should take a look at. Actually, there's three of them. Um, I'll just skip because we said decide which game your students should play. Let the students know that they will be able to play a game that will let them travel the world exploring extraordinary holiday traditions. So you should just uh, warn them in advance what they will be doing. Um, maybe uh, you want uh, if we are we suggest some oral interaction activities also. So if you're going to do those, 
you shouldn't it shouldn't be like surprise surprise uh, we have to reinvest some of the stuff that you saw in there so you should let them know uh, in advance that they're going to interact orally or produce text based on the contents of the game um well martin is, is thinking you said ah uh, so i think you're thinking um i don't know about anybody else but when uh, martin is presenting like when he's sharing his screen sometimes i find it's really small for me to see oh, yeah. so I don't know if you know this trick but if you take um if you click on control and use your mouth, mouse, not your mouth, don't use your mouth, your mouse, <laughs> your control with your mouse and you you um, scroll with your mouse, it makes it bigger. Except with a Mac. <laughs> Except with a Mac, right. Um, yeah, I could make it bigger, but I, I'm, I'm just going through it, but you do have access to, to all of this, okay? Um, so anyways, I was, done with this okay so if you're going to do like oral interactions you should uh, prepare breakout rooms uh, in advance and we now uh, have breakout rooms with teams so you should check out if your school board has them now but there are there's a, a button just for uh, teams now mm -hmm. for breakout rooms mm -hmm. finally um that, oh we have uh, someone if you want to turn off your microphone that's that's also good um all right so about the game in this activity we invite students to discover a holiday uh with many holiday traditions around the world through a breakout game if you're not uh, familiar with uh breakout games this is a nice way that you can get familiar with them and like i mentioned before with genially you have like templates that are already done that you could down well not exactly download but that you could take and modify to create down a uh, breakout games so if you see that your students really like uh these types of games you can go ahead and create some more afterwards so it's super important that you tell your students to read uh, the mission slide i'm going to show it to you in a second because this is where they'll understand what they need to do to succeed and there's actually like two parts to the mission and some uh, people like we're not getting it so we even added a, a, a video here even if it's super small you'll still get it okay so the students need to answer questions for uh did you, they need to answer questions for each correctly okay so in in for each video or each text that they're going to have and at the end of each section they have to move the white spot around that you'll see here i can actually just hit it so you see that this white spot or white circle can be dragged around the screen and when if I were to make it bigger, there we go, I'll play it again. So that's the most important part that people did not get is that you could drag this white circle until you discover the hidden word on the page, okay? So that's super important that you do this because sometimes like people are like, oh, I see the letters or I have found the clue. No, you have to move that white circle around. I don't know if I was clear enough, but anyways, if you don't have this, you won't be able to access the other sections. Okay. Right. So, so there's two yeah. passwords. One, there's one password, the one that with the white spotlight, that is what's gonna open the next sort of destination, the next theme, and then the letters are what gets you at the very end. So there's two parts on the, the mission page. There's a, an explanation for two parts. So there's the spotlight and the letters. Those are two separate things. So just to be sure, we're, we're going to check it out with you. But what you should do is, of course, like copy the link to this uh, presentation. OK, so uh, let me I, I'm just going to make it bigger so that everyone can see. And then afterwards, I'm going to let you go and try it out and you'll be able to ask us uh, your, your questions, okay? So you what, what you would do is you would share the link to the Genially. Of course, you won't be able to, um, to uh, see your students' progress uh, or to, to get some kind of mark out of this, but you would be able to know if they finish the game, if they're able to give you the final answer. OK, so as you can see, um, so Diane, can you still hear me or you you, you're hearing the plane too much? I hear, I hear the plane, but I also hear you. All right, cool. So welcome aboard. Uh, this is your commander speaking. Uh, <laughs> 
the weather is actually uh, pretty cool out there and uh, we should be now so not able to all right so there we go um so you have all of the different sections here so you have the introduction where we'll be introducing uh, the missions and so on and then we have our different categories uh, of uh, traditions. This is for the secondary 345 version. I think for the other ones, they're, they're the same, but they're just with less texts, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, cycle three elementary ha doesn't have the, the caring. Uh, it only has some, some one tasty, a couple of spooky, and one wacky uh, tradition. All right, and this is the part if your students uh, get lost and but they do have the final answer, they could just click uh, on, on this one on the are you ready final answer and they could go there. So I'll just go through the first part with you and then I'll let you explore the rest. So in the introduction, like I said, well, of course, our our context is traditions. We're going over traditions. So what makes a tradition a tradition and how do we keep traditions alive? Uh, and how did they start? Let's find out. And then, OK, so the video is there as well. So your students should not get lost uh, within this on how to uh, to do this, how to find the, the magic words there. It says explore holiday traditions from all over the world. Correctly answer questions at each of your destinations to reveal clue pages. Write down the random letters you find on the clue pages. So that's going to be super obvious. But when you see a white circle, move it around to reveal the code you need to unlock your next destination. When finished, put all the letters in order to form one word and reveal the holiday message. All right, so when we say I'm ready, you, it's going to start right away with the tasty traditions. But if, if students were to be lost, you know, and they come back to this, they can always open the tasty. OK, it comes back here, but the other sections are protected. They're all password protected. So that means that the students, they need to do everything to get that final code to access Spooky. They, knew, they need to do everything in Spooky to get the passcode to go into the Wacky. They need to do everything in the Wacky section to get the passcode for the, uh, for the caring section. And then if they did all of them, they get the final answer and they get to do everything um so they have the answer to everything so i'm just going to go like this and i can stop sharing my screen are we good now i can't see anybody um are, are there any questions i went fast we don't prepare these presentations three months in advance <laughs> actually we don't even prepare them at all <laughs> except for the presentation itself little Google slide. So if you do have questions, it's super possible. If something was not clear, just go ahead. Yes, Micah. I have a question. So what I do is I can basically copy the link and send it to them by Teams. And have you guys tested that that works? Yes, because it's okay. it's a, an outside link, so they would just. Excellent. So whatever way you use to communicate with your students, that's the way you could do it. Perfect. Thank you. There, oh, was one question, the, there was yeah. a question in the chat about um, about how do they have the students do it. So um, like who controls the, the spotlight? That was the question. So whoever has the link can control the spotlight. So the idea with the breakout rooms is that if you would send um, you would send the link to everyone. So in Teams or in Classroom or whatever other platform that you use. And then when they when they finish, when they have the final password, they come back. And if you choose to have them in breakout rooms because you want to have an oral interaction with them or you want to come back on things with them, then they would all come back in their breakout rooms and have a discussion. Or you you could, I, I don't think that we would suggest doing it live and have everyone watch you because that's kind of not the purpose of, of the breakout activity. Oh, and... Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Um, for now, the activities are under the uh, the news section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, will they eventually move uh, somewhere else uh, in, on the website or? To the resources section. Yes. OK. OK. But not, not okay. for this holiday, but next no. year, if you look for them, they'll be in the resources. OK, good. Thanks. We might like push them again next year as in the news section again as why well, this brand new thing, but it's going to be from this year. I realize, unless there are other questions, I'm just going to go back to 
the sequence, all right, to show you, to tell you a little bit how it can be done in a synchronous way and an asynchronous way. So let me just share my screen again with you. Uh, voila. Okay, so this, in case you're you're wondering, I, I was in this, uh, the sequence right there. So, and I told you about the game and everything, and now I just clicked on this arrow, and then we have the possible sequence, okay? So just to let you know that, like Diane was saying, students would be able to, um, to play the game either alone or they could be playing with partners. If they play with partners, that means that you've prepared breakout rooms and one of the students, only one of the students is going to open the link. All right, and then they'll have to discuss the, the different answers. Although I must admit it must be pretty easy if you're doing it with friends, but you know, it's Christmas, so if they just wanna have fun and like you wanna have a contest of who's going to find the, 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 the solution, the fastest or whatever, you, you could you could do it that way, okay? But just to let you know that we are, let me try to make this a tiny bit bigger. Okay, so uh, this would be like, we're expecting that the game would, would take one period of probably 60, 50 to 75 minutes, okay? Depending on how much you say at the beginning and at the end. All right, and we, we're letting you know how to go about it, activating student prior knowledge, and maybe give them uh, vocabulary if you feel they, they need it. But then we also have other suggestions for afterwards. So like I said, if you do have more than one period uh, to, to teach, uh, then we have possible oral interaction and we've prepared some possible uh, questions to have your students interact orally. Uh, and we have also prepared some questions where your students would be able to write and produce texts uh, in relationship with what they would have seen within uh, the the game. OK, so I just want to give you some ideas there. Uh, so for the C3, we ha we trans we we transformed. We got you a, a bunch of prompts. OK, so you could actually get inspired with the questions from the C1, but they could also like describe a particular family tradition. They could recall a memory that took place during a tradition. They could imagine the origin story of one of the spooky traditions that we showed you. Uh, they could write a message to thank someone who's making this holiday better for others or whichever other prompt you want to use. OK, um, for the interaction questions, we have how are traditions created? What is needed to keep a tradition alive? Agree on which tradition you would like to have in your town. Explain which tradition you would like to try at home. And we have one where we say your school pays for your trip. If you can all agree on where to go celebrate a tradition, agree on where to go and why. Categorize the different traditions that were presented. So which one would you rank as the best one, the wackiest one, uh, most eccentric and so on. OK, so this would these are some of the uh, suggestions that we have for you if you want to stretch this. Uh, this this learning sequence, if we can call it that. Diane, I don't know if you wanted to add something there. No, um, when you were talking about the, the possible oral interactions, I was thinking about like F, the categorize. I'm mean, this is something I really, really like to do with students like that. I like making lists in life. Lists make me happy. So um, putting things in a list order, you know, uh, I don't know why you're laughing at me, Carl. Um, you know, like, and I, I think it's a great way to get students interacting. Like, no, I don't agree. I think this is more important. No, this is funnier. And I, I, it's something that I really, really enjoy doing with students and in life in general. And and when we say the all expenses uh, paid trip there, that would be, uh, so just to let you know that the students will be checking out some traditions in Japan, Sweden, uh, Ukraine. Korea. Uh, Austria, Germany, the Alps, uh, Spain, France is mentioned, yep. uh, South Korea. So it, it, I think that would make a nice discussion where they would like to go and why and try to to all agree on one destination because a lot of them are actually pretty cool traditions that they might not know about. Uh, so and, and speaking of which, I would like you to go and maybe check it out. 
Um, so what I suggest is maybe we can you can share the link to the Genially, uh, Diane. One second. And then you could go and try it out and we'll be right here. If you have questions, you can ask us questions or. <laughs> we'll take questions, we'll take comments, we'll take insults. Oh, hang on. That's, I'm going to share the, the secondary uh, three, four, five. I'm sorry, I was sharing the wrong version there. So I'm going to share the cycle two, just because the cycle two is the most complete that we have. Exactly. And, and then you can work your way down from there. Um, right. Um, so this is the most complete, the most difficult, and the other ones are kind of lighter versions of, of this. So, so there it is it's in the yeah, chat. You say, oh, there's no way my students can do this. You can go down one notch. And and if you still think that there's, you know, there's questions in there that your students can't do, um, then you could just, you know, reuse like at the bottom of the screen. I think Martin mentioned it earlier. Um, reuse the genially and either take out or modify. So you've shared it, Diane? I did. It's in All the right. it's in the chat. So this this is the part where maybe I'll, I'll stop the recording and uh, or just before I do and before because maybe some of you will get so much into the game that you'll forget to come back and say goodbye and wish us a Merry Christmas. We totally get it. Uh, <laughs> so if that's the case, though, Martin, do you want to talk about our events after Christmas now? That's what I was going to say, okay. but you can go right ahead. You do it. Um, OK, well, guess what? There's events after Christmas. Um, if you look in the presentation that was shared at the very beginning, um, it was shared a couple of times in the in the chat as well. We have uh, on January 13th, we have a uh, Discover Campus Reci um, from four to five, like the other web events that we've been having um, the past. Is this our fourth or third? I don't I don't know third or fourth that we've had I've so far. Time, so. Maybe two. <laughs> uh, January tw uh, 20th, we have another one from four to five. So this is answering your questions. Uh, January 25th, hybrid planning and then February. Uh, we don't have the date yet in the calendar here, but uh, it'll be answering your questions again. So we'll have those four events that are coming up soon. Um, we'll also have likely a presentation for the activities that will be shared for for secondary um, before. Um, Oh, as usual, and for, for those of you who are interested in, in uh, collecting a badge for your participation in today's uh, webinar, this is how you do it. It's again, it's in the, the presentation, so you can click on how to get there and how to get your badge. Um, is that is it all, Martin? Are we yes. talking also about our lunch dates or is that an, another meeting? You, you, you could go go right ahead. Tell okay, us about so, that. Um, there is uh, we've been having these uh, webinar web events on um, after school, like four o'clock after school. But uh, as of next year, next year, I can't believe we could say next year 2020 will be behind us uh, in 2021. Uh, we're, we're going to be holding lunch dates. So basically it's uh, lunch with your friendly Récit National. Um, and the dates will come out soon because we're, we're in the middle of uh, booking our, our calendars to make sure that everything is is okay with everybody, but um, we're going to have lunch dates so you can come in, uh, drop in with us, and um, it won't be an official meeting. It'll be more of um, an informal come have lunch with us. And if you have questions about hybrid teaching, your your distance teaching, and you, you have questions about what's going on, then uh, we'd love you to to come in and have lunch with us. So that's it. And Martin, do you want to do the last one? Yeah, just so that you know that we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, you saw we went all the way till February, but we will be covering evaluation, like we had mentioned. That, that was one of the needs that uh, many of you expressed. And also, just before spring break, of course, we're going to take about a talk about uh, well-being. All right, so to still continue to take care of ourselves uh, during these times. So we'll be there for for that as well and also take care of the students. But if. Nobody takes care of the teachers, then these students don't stand a chance. So. That's why we 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 like to take care of you. <laughs>